Hi, I'm Phil Bass, meat science faculty at the University of Idaho. This is a fabrication of a beef round, and this is sponsored in conjunction with Fair Idaho. So the first thing we need to do on this beef round is to remove this big bone called the H bone. That's part of the hip bone. And what we'll do is actually carve out the inside of that. Now, the H bone sits there like a cupped hand, so keep that in mind as you're fabricating something like this. That's just a little bit of tailbone that was left on. And so now, we can go after this bit of muscle right inside that H bone, it's called the oyster. So we're going to shuck the oyster out of there. This goes as, uh, usually as, as uh, ground beef trim. Some folks try to make a little steak out of it, and it's kind of like an inside skirt steak. Um, but oftentimes, it's not quite worth the, worth the trouble or effort. And so uh, most of the time, it's just going to go as ground round. Next, we need to carve out the hole that is in the H bones right there. By carving out the hole in the H bone, we'll create almost a little handle right here to pull against once we start to carve around the outside of the H bone. And again, keeping in mind that H bone is like a cupped hand, so we're going to be carving underneath and around like that. Once that H bone is out, we'll just do a little bit of trimming to get a little bit of extra meat off of there. Now we can remove what's on top of the round. This is why it's called the top round. It's because it's the next thing in line as you're fabricating the round. On the bottom, of course, is the bottom round. The top round is also the inner leg, and so we would call that the inside round. And on the bottom, it's the outer leg, and so we call that the outside round. Here, we have the sirloin tip. What was attached right here and left on the loin is what's called the ball tip. The sirloin tip is also known as a knuckle when it's on the round. We're going to follow the natural seams right up and around here to peel that round away, uh, uh, the, the top round away from the rest of the round. <coughs> We start right about here where the cap of the round sits, and then we'll go just a little bit deeper under that fat pad to get after the main part of the inside round. The round has some nice big natural seams to work from. It's a lot easier to cut on the rail, but not everybody has a rail. But if you can, suspend the round from a chain or a, or a hook, and then you can use gravity to your advantage. Your indicator on this side is a little muscle about the size of my thumb. That muscle is called the sartorius, and we're going to cut through that right about there. Once we cut through that, we'll follow that seam down along the edge of the knuckle and peel that round, that top round, away from the rest of it.
Eventually, we'll come to the femur bone. That's the big, large, round bone in the round, big leg bone. That's the top round or inside round removed. The top round or inside round has a number of different things you can do with it. Probably the easiest thing though, to make this a higher value item is to knock some of this extra fat off the outside. And then peel the cap. The cap, known as the gracilis muscle, that's its scientific name, actually performs quite well similar to a skirt steak. By removing the cap, you also make a more trim and easier to work with inside round for roasts. The cap has some side muscles that can be removed, and usually that's just going to go to ground beef. There's a top round cap, ready for marinating and then going right to the grill. Now we have the remainder of the top round. We'll just clean it up a little bit, knocking some of this extra fat off the outside. The top round usually is going to be merchandised pretty lean. This would be considered a cap off, side muscle off, denuded top round, sometimes called a Cosmo. Now that it's been cleaned up, we can cut this into steaks and roasts. Depending on what you want to do with this, you can cut it entirely into steaks, entirely into roasts, or a little of both. Let's do a little of both. I'm going to come over here to the end and square the end off. I'll next cut a nice top round roast and clean it up just a little. That can be grilled um, on a low heat or put in the oven, uh, makes a really nice carving roast. Once you cut to that location, you can actually cut some really nice London broil style steaks. Now, London broil, that's just a term that's used for a large, lean piece of meat. A lot of times it's going to be cut from the top round, but can also be cut from the top sirloin, from the clawed heart, um, and I've even seen the flank steak called a London broil. But really, it's just a lean, whole muscle steak looking item. If you cut it from the top round, it's highly recommended that it's marinated because it is going to have a little bit of bite to it, but still makes a really nice looking steak. The remainder of this is I'm going to go ahead and just cut into roasts. But again, you could have just cut uh, London broil steaks almost to the very end. I'm 
So that's the top round. Next, I'm going to remove the eye of round. It sits right along the side of where that top round was. The eye of round is technically part of the bottom round. If you leave that attached to the bottom round flat, which is the biceps femoris, it's the one sitting on the table right now, then that would be called a gooseneck, if you've ever heard of that term. Kind of an older cut. Anymore, usually these different muscles are merchandised independently. So we're going to start right here and just start to open up the seam of where that eye of round attaches to the heel, what's called the heel. I'm going to peel that back and work down that seam. The seam that attaches the eye around to the bottom round flat is a pretty narrow seam. It's not a very wide one. Just be careful with it as you're trying to pull it out if you're trying to keep those muscles independent. That way you don't score up one muscle or the other too much. The eye around is usually merchandised almost completely denuded, as in removing all of the fat from the outside. Now that that's been denuded, we have a pretty clean roast to do some, some different uh, merchandising with. Oftentimes, the eye of round's gonna be sold just like that at retail. Sometimes you can even just block the ends and make two nice little roasts out of it. Now the eye of round is a very, very lean piece of meat, so be careful as this is being prepared. You're definitely going to want some moist heat to go along with it, possibly a marinade, and even possibly a sauce, just because it is so lean. The other thing that sometimes you'll encounter are eye of round steaks. They look amazing. They look almost like a tenderloin, but be very careful because of what this muscle is. This muscle is the hamstring. It does a lot of work on that hind leg. That means that there's going to be some tenderness challenges to overcome. And so it's highly recommended that any time an eye of round steak is merchandised that you educate your customers or your dining guests about how to fully prepare and optimize this piece of meat. Moist cookery, definitely some marinade and possibly a little bit of a sauce to help with the leanness. Next, we'll go after the sirloin tip right here. That's the knuckle. We can follow along the femur bone and start to loosen that set of muscles away. It's actually four muscles, it's the quadriceps group. Up and along that femur bone and then right at where the knee joint is, we'll pull the kneecap or the patella out along with that knuckle. There's a nice layer of silver skin that separates the knuckle or the sirloin tip from the bottom round flat. And that's going to be our big separation point right there. That's my indicator. The knuckle is also going to usually be merchandised almost entirely denuded. So peeled the fat away. 
you can come in right behind that patella and cut that away along with the fat that's attached to it. That leaves us with a knuckle roast. The knuckle can be merchandised in its entirety as a really nice slow cook roast. You can cook the whole thing as a carving roast or actually seam this apart into its individual muscle properties. Either way, it actually is a pretty tender piece of meat if treated correctly. The final big step will be to remove the bottom round flat from the rest of the round. So we're gonna follow along the natural seams yet again, up and around the femur bone. Just to begin the loosening process. Then I'm gonna turn this over and you can see the natural seam where that bottom round flat sits. It's very thin at this location, so be careful. And a sharp knife is really helpful. You're gonna trace that bottom round flat. And then using your hook, open up the natural seams. The rest of this hind leg is heel and shank meat. Shank meat's really just going to want to be cut into either cross-cut shanks for really slow and low cooking or made into ground beef. Same thing with the heel meat. Not a lot that can be done with it. There is another steak in there called a Merlot steak, but it does take a little bit of work to get to. For the main part of the bottom round flat. We just need to separate the last little bit of adjacent lean that's still attached to it. Knock some of this extra fat off of there. trim the sides. The bottom round flat does have some unique properties to it. On this one end where it's kind of pointed and has a little extra fat cover, that's the rump end. It's recommended to square that end off, making almost a triangular shaped roast, and that's a classic rump roast. Really delicious. That portion is actually a little bit more tender than the remainder of this bottom round. However, the rest of this bottom round still has some amazing flavor and when cooked slowly, can still be pretty tender. So we've cut a couple of bottom round roasts. You can even cut bottom round steaks as another London broil option. Again, keeping in mind you probably want to marinate to improve that tenderness that's in there. And then the rest of this can make some really nice stew meat. This very last part, the heel, is attached right at the base of the Achilles tendon. And so we'll pop through that area. Open that up. And follow the natural seams.
You have some great marrow bones that come from the center part, center part of the, the femur bone and some other great marrow bones over here on the tibia and fibula. All of this shank meat, again, could be either made into cross-cut shanks or made into ground beef. Last little bit of this heel, there's actually a couple pieces in here. There's one that's called the superficial digital flexor. That's a big name for a really small piece of meat, but it's the part that was attached to the heel or to uh, the Achilles tendon. We're going to pull that out following its natural seams. And it makes something almost similar to a lamb shank. But of course it's beef. It's called a brazon. Has a lot of great connective tissue that if you do slow cook it, has some really cool texture to it. What's left is usually gonna be cut into ground beef. However, we can still make a very lean steak out of this. That very lean steak is called a Merlot steak. And it is surprisingly tender. All you have to do is open up the seams that are in that Merlot steak. Cleaning off the additional connective tissue on both sides, and you end up with a very lean looking steak such as that. That's the fabrication of the beef round. If you have other questions or want to learn more, reach out to Fair Idaho. And as always, go beef.